So, today's class we will uh, take a look at how to model nonlinear relations. So, we have been looking mainly at linear models till now, though the behavior could be nonlinear, uh, the relations we have been pretty much using at linear uh, models. Simply define a process is linear if process response is proportional to the input stimulus given right, like a savings bank account that we modeled or uh, some concepts like you know, putting 10 percent more effort may get 10 percent more results coming in. So, those kind of things are expected to be linear uh, and we can model it as uh, and linear systems are ex extensively studied. Since mathematical modeling of it is quite uh, straightforward, in fact, so much so that many times even non-linearities in actual systems is linearized so that we can effectively analyze it, uh, though it may not be an accurate model, it does give valuable insight. So, many times we end up approximating real life scenarios into linear systems so that we can analyze it. So, today's class we will take a look at how to model simple uh, to little more complicated uh, non-linear relations between any two variables. Okay. But nonlinear relations are fundamental to many, many systems. Can you think of some examples where the relation between the two variables could be nonlinear? When you purchase things, what do we do? When you purchase vegetables or purchase anything, bargain, or even if whatever, when you buy clothes or something, you do not expect the same price, right? You do not say, okay, one whatever, uh, you always bargain, meaning the relation is nonlinear, it is not linear. When, when people start giving offers saying okay, if you buy one pant it is uh, or one jeans it is 1000, but if you buy 3 you get it at a price of 2. So, that is a nonlinear relationship right there which are using in everyday decision making right. So, if I am going to model that it has to be a nonlinear relationship that has to be captured. So, now like that can you think of some more examples. We always want volume discounts as we increase in volume we, we always say that right you know instead of buying whatever. 1 kg, I am buying 5 kg, so give me a discount. So, instead of buying 1 set, I am buying 3 sets, so can I reduce the price. So, that means the relation between the price and quantity is nonlinear, right. So, like that, can you think of some other scenarios where you will end up such kind of relations? Price per unit reduces when you purchase in bulk. Company can manufacture desired rate unless capacity is inadequate. That is a nonlinear relationship. When you assume you can produce whatever you are assuming, it is well within your capacity. If it exceeds your capacity, then it cannot produce at the same rate. Or I cannot keep selling as much as I can. I can only sell as up to the inventory of stock I have. Once I exhaust it, I cannot sell anymore, right. That relationship right there is a nonlinear relationship. Uh, or healthcare boosts life expectancy, but up to a point. Healthcare spending is or uh, only it will go only up to a point, it cannot extend life infinitely. Product sale must tend to zero, so availability or quality falls to zero, no matter how cheap it is. So, it is not just only the price that drives it, the inventory also should be available. Just because you reduce the price, but does not mean, but if inventory is zero, does not mean that you can keep selling, right. But that is a non linear relation right there in reality. Or parking charges at malls, it is not linear, it goes in jumps, it jumps in you know, there are breakpoints and you get uh, for so many duration that many hours of uh, based on the hours you get charged rounded to the nearest break point. Fuel consumption, speed of vehicle again nonlinear relationships. Yeah, like that there are many such scenarios which we, we may want to capture in our simulation models. So, that it can better represent the real system. When we look at linear systems what we are trying to do is linearize the model so that we can analyze it better. But when we, when we move into simulation modeling, we tend to make it more closer to reality because we are not doing any mathematical analysis, we are actually doing the simulation of it. So, it can handle nonlinearities in simulation. So, because of that we want to capture reality as close as possible, which will result in capturing all these nonlinearities more explicitly, so that we can better represent the real processes. So, let us look at some simple examples first to understand how to you know use these or represent these nonlinearities in our simulation models. But as soon as you start doing these nonlinearities, you will build some functions, you will hit the limits of using linear systems analysis, what are 
uh, methods that we have used and uh, for some scenarios simulation could be the only resort to analyze it or if we simplify the model we can apply uh, we can analyze it analytically. So, let us uh, take a simple inventory example. A small production unit has a fairly stable process with 1000 uh, 100 uh, SKU per unit per day of production. So, it makes 100 SKUs per day. The finished goods are added to the end inventory. The demand is satisfied from the end inventory. The production continues independent of the actual demand. So, whatever the demand they keep producing things at this constant rate of 100. The initial inventory is 200 units, the average demand is 110 SKU per day. We need to build a valid SD model of the above scenario. So, how many stocks are here in this system? Finished goods inventory that is the only stock in the system. So, what will be the flows that affects this stock? Production rate and sales rate will be the two flows that affects the stock. Production rate will add to the stock and the sales rate will reduce the stock. So, in this what you are going to do is have the demand as, as a third variable. So, we will have production rate affecting my inventory and inventory is reduced by sales rate and let us model demand separately as 110 units which affects the sales rate. So, I want you all to model the system. So, what you see here is the documentation as provided by Vensum. So, when you build a model and you click the document all button in Vensum, it represents what are the underlying equations along with the uh, variable names, units, etc., are all captured in this slide. Uh, you may or may not have tried it before, but does not matter, just use your uh, common sense, read this and create the appropriate variables within your model and build the model. So, in this, what is the stock here? which uh, row number is the stock 4, how do you identify it? 1 for example, you see the word integ, whenever there is integ that means whatever variable name next to it is the stock that is it and whatever affects through integ production rate sales rate that, that must be the flows. Then the equation of flows are given, the units for each is also given, initial time, final time goes from the model settings, time units are also specified and whichever is not the rates that must be an auxiliary variable right. So, you can build this model. Once you finish it do units check, if you get an error fix it. If you observe for each variable name uh, is written this is just output directly from Vensum and it is sorted alphabetically that is why you get demand first then final time, initial time, inventory etcetera. If I ask you to document probably you will write the inventory first and then the flow rates, then the other variables. It is just sorting it alphabetically. Final time, initial time, time step comes in your model settings, others come in your model. Kindly become familiar with such interfaces so that you can uh, understand what the model is presented. When you simulate it, what happens to the inventory? At what point does it cross 0? At time 20 and just keeps falling, which is intuitive because demand is 110 and production is 100. So, minus 10 is removed from at every time step. And initially, I have 200 is a stock, so it takes 20 time units for it to hit 0, right. So, with this simple model. If you take it and show it to your production manager, suppose he is a consultant, he will say what nonsense, how can inventory be negative? You can explain no, this is just approximation, but he is not going to listen. This does not represent reality, make my model realistic first. It is not capturing my actual system that we have. This is a simple example, imagine if say demand itself was randomly varying and production was even if it is constant, some period it will be negative, some period it will be positive. Still, people will not, uh, cannot comprehend whether what happens if inventory is actually negative, what does it even mean? You can't convince such things to managers. As analyst, you can think of okay, invent, negative inventory is called backlog. Then you should have an explicit variable called backlog. Then how will you respond to that? 
why didn't you have model backlog separately? And you may say I do not represent backlog at all, if there is no inventory my, my this thing is lost, so why did you assume there is backlog? You go ask for chai, if you say chai katam ho gaya, you do not measure it as a negative inventory, right. He does not wait you that you will come back and I have chai again, that demand is lost. So, whether you are assuming as lost demand or not, it has to become more explicit, idea is to make the model more clear. So, in this case it is quite simple, suppose the demand is lost, right. So, we have to make it clear, inventory should not be negative, let us say, although model shows no error, does not seem to be realistic, say factory manager unhappy that the stock of finished goods goes negative. So, how do we fix it? Logically, how will you fix it? What do you want to do? If demand is there and inventory is sufficient meet the demand, then I give it. If demand is not there, I mean demand is more than inventory, then I give whatever inventory available to meet the demand. If demand is less than inventory, then I give the full demand, right. So, this is a simple if then else statement. A simple way to fix it is use an if then else construct or a min function where sales equals the demand only if you have enough inventory. Can you model this? I mean I am sure you can model this, model it. So, now sales rate will be a function of what? Inventory and demand. So, why do not you have a link from that and complete the model, then simulate it, then after time 20 your inventory should be 0 but a sales rate should still be there, should be at least 100 unit sales rate, sales rate need to follow fall from. So, in the previous model if you simulate it you will find that sales rates continue to be 110, production continues to be 100, inventory became negative. If, if sales is a function of inventory and demand then inventory has to fall to 0, sales rate will be initially 110, after some time it will become 100 which will balance the a production rate, why do not you simulate it and see if that happens, model it and simulate it. Go to sales rate, if you want to know how if then else works, you just click if then else, it will give the help, you can read it and model it. Did you do this and sales rate, you can either have two functions, one it could be just uh, If then else, I think it should be inventory uh, less than or equal to demand, then inventory else demand or you could use a min function. minimum of inventory or demand, this for sales rate. See as soon as I introduce this model became non-linear, right. You do not need to have explicitly 2 power x or uh, x into y, even a simple min or max function makes your model non-linear. So, does it work? Did you simulate it? Did you do units check? Units are not okay. What does it error say? Inventory units is SKU. Demand is SKU per day. How do we fix this? So, to do that, so this is a very common phenomenon. We are because many times when we use these terms analytically, many times we end up multiplying or dividing by 1. So, we do not usually represent it explicitly and it does not affect analytical result, but simulation validity it will affect. So, to make it proper, let us define from inventory another variable called as max sales, then define something called as average. Uh, 
delay so in our equations we will do max sales is equal to obviously its inventory divided by average delay the units of max sales is uh, sku by day simply keep average delay equal to 1 per day i am just writing the units right there and now your sales rate equation is equal to minimum of this max sales possible or max sales comma demand now units match so it becomes more apparent it is just good programming or modeling practice to not multiply inside the equation any constant numbers then it becomes very difficult so now we have brought the average delay as a constant right so you could have just divided we don't need to define max sales itself but making it explicit uh, gives us handle here suppose average delay to move inventory is 3 days then all i have to do is come and change this into 3 that means though i have inventory only one third i can sell at any time period so those gets captured if i you know make all my parameters explicit and there is a physical meaning to each of it like this average delay could be the average time taken to move inventory right or instead of delay you can call it average fraction of inventory i would like to sell so i might have policy where i can only sell 90% of the inventory at any point in time so 10% i'm not willing to sell or i just cannot get it all the way to the end so i may just put some limit or i might want to model say some fraction is being um, lost or there are defects in the system etc so usable inventory could be only 90% there could be variety of scenarios so it's good to explicitly bring out the parameters why don't you add this component uh, so we will be removing this line this uh, causal link rather and uh, including the one in the top hopefully when you run it you should get the same behavior but without the units error check units error when you check the units it should not give you any more errors you should say all units are okay please check that oh sorry this is not average delay is one day sorry not one per day having shown this please use all these non linear constructs like if then else min or as a min there will be a max with caution it is very tempting when you start modeling systems okay if this scenario happens this is the behavior this is the behavior etc uh ensure model doesn't become too fuzzy because once you start putting this it's little more difficult to do sensitivity analysis of the models uh when you start uh, doing that but where it is unavoidable we have to use it so we just uh, we just figured out how to use it let us just keep it there okay we did there were errors and we improved the model to ensure there are no unit errors 